Well, welcome back to another Tech Talk, if we'll call it that. Um, I've decided I'm going to talk today about the roll cage and the roll cage specifications in our rule book on the, uh, our, our boats here in the sprint boat world. So they're, they're kind of unique, and the 907 is sitting back here behind me. That boat has been sold, and it's going to become a 400 boat. So I'm uh, taking that roll cage out of that. It doesn't belong in that boat. And I figured I'd pull it out and talk about the cage uh, before I move the 146 back in here. And we're going to fix the fuel line on that and go do some testing. Speaking of 146, if you ever wondered where that number came from, this was my fleet squadron, the VFA 146 Blue Diamond. So that's where that number came from. That's where the color of our boats came from. And uh, the 907 comes from Alaska's area code. So those are my two boat numbers, the 146 and the 907. So I'll spin the phone around and we're gonna talk a little bit about the roll cages today before I gotta pull that cage out of the 907. Okay, so the basic premises are all of the tubes, they have to be inch and a half chromoly and 083 wall. So that's the, the basics. Every single tube in here is inch and a half chromoly tube and 083 wall. There is no requirement for any of the welds to be TIG welded. You can MIG weld those. I've done a little bit of both. Sometimes I MIG, sometimes I TIG. Um, but those are the kind of the basic rules of the roll cage materials, if you will. The basic construction, you got two main hoops, the front hoop and then the rear hoop. Those have to be one continuous uh, piece with 90 degree bends um, at the corner. So two main hoops, front hoop and a main hoop. And then when you look at it from the side, these create an A-frame, if you will, an upper A and the lower A with the, uh, with the well, you can see there, the upper bar and the lower bar. So that's the basic kind of outer shell, if you will. Then inside, you're gonna have your main uh, crossbar that that thing is really critical to get the height right uh, from, so that anchors off that middle or the upper A arm because that's where your seat belts have to attach to as they come through the seats and your seat belts attach to that bar and they don't, they want only about a 15 degree angle uh, of a down pull on those seat belts as they come through your seat. So you get your rear hoop, your front hoop, your A-frame and your crossbar. And then also for your seat mounting, you gotta have, your seat has to be mounted in six places. One up front, one on the kind of the rear seat, and then one on the shoulder. So that's the requirement to have these two or uh, two lower arms or uh, the bars that connect to the lower A-arm, if you will. The other thing is you gotta have a crossbar. Only one is required up here, but then you have to have a capping plate. I'm pretty sure that's eighth inch capping plate on the corners that that really strengthens the corners. It also kind of acts like a snowshoe, if you will, when it rolls uh, or if you roll. And that has to protect or, or strengthen the entire radius of each one of these these bends here. So that's the purpose of the capping plate to kind of tie everything together. Oh, I'm just thinking about the weight. I had, I, I wanna say that this roll cage here is about 60 pounds and maybe I'll, I'll weigh it when I pull it out of here, but that is the basics of our roll cage. Um, inch and a half tubing, 083, they're all chromoly, so very springy. And you've seen some of my wrecks and rolls and uh, there's a good reason for that. Six points of uh, attachment for the seats. So oh, let's talk about the attachment place for the actual roll cage. So you can do it one of two different ways. This is essentially is uh, one way here. You can weld like a solid aluminum. I believe that has to be six inches in length, solid aluminum to your hole, and then do a through bolt with a gusset kind of a deal here. Or you can actually build a foot um, out of steel that uh, that welds onto the bottom and then through bolts through the bottom of your hole. I've done both of those styles and there's pros and cons to each. And then you also have to have, so this is what one of those, uh, a foot would look like. I believe it's a 316th requirement and the other two attachment, uh, attachment spots 
are on the center engine bears, if you will. So six attachment spots, two in the front, two in the back, and two in the middle. They, it's not mandatory, but you can also attach to your, your gunnels um, for, your, for your roll cage. That just is gonna kinda help stiffen the side up, if you will. Not, uh, not too critically important, but anyway, that is the roll cage. Um, the seats, like I said, six point attachment with uh, 15 degrees on the, uh, the down slope of your harness. And uh, all, your sa all your safety belt attachment points have to attach directly to your roll cage. So you are essentially in a roll cage capsule uh, when you're in this thing. So that is a quick and dirty on the roll cage uh, specs. So I thought I'd walk out to the, the good old 146 back here, and this is this boat is ready to go, ready to rock. I just gotta rebuild one fuel line um, back on the upper upper portion of the from the fuel regulator up to the fuel rail. And this thing is going to uh, go testing. So that is uh, that's gonna happen Saturday. And we have we are actually teaming up with a another YouTube channel local to the area here. Pretty excited. I'm not gonna name any names. I don't wanna spoil the the uh, surprise is I'm pretty excited to, to do this. I think you're going to like it as well. So we're going to team up with a, a fellow YouTuber here in the Washington area and uh, go do some uh, sprint boat testing. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the quick talk on the roll cage. And we'll get some good content up early next week from our testing results with our, uh, our newfound friends. I didn't even realize they were this close to us, but uh, pretty excited to go do that with them and see how that all goes. Thanks for watching, and we'll, uh, we'll check back with you next week.